special guest Jeff Bradbury. And I will begin again. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Classroom 2.0 Live for February the 7th, 2015. The topic today is TeacherCast with Jeff Bradbury. Your show hosts are Peggy George, I'm Lori Moffitt, and Tammy Moore. Thank you, Tammy, for doing the closed captioning. I'm now I'm going to turn the mic over to Peggy, who will now introduce Jeff. Well, hello, everyone. It is morning in Phoenix, Arizona, and a beautiful day, I must say. It's 10 a.m. in Phoenix, but I know many of you are in many different time zones. So we are thrilled to have Jeff Bradbury back on Classroom 2 Live to share his latest and greatest PD resources with us. There is no one more talented, creative, and generous and open to sharing and collaborating with educators around the world. Jeff is the creator of TeacherCast.net and TeacherCast University, among many other things. He's a speaker, a writer, a broadcaster, a consultant, and an educational media specialist. Jeff was recognized as the, uh, one of the top 50 educators using social media at the first ever BAMI Awards. He's also a Google certified teacher. And in his real full-time job, he is director of orchestras in the North Brunswick uh, Turnpike School District, where he teaches music theory and music history. He also has been a regular presenter at ISTE and many virtual conferences, and he was one of the founding organizers of EdCamp New Jersey. As you can imagine, in his free time, Jeff enjoys his teaching, his broadcasting, playing the violin, conducting, and most important, spending time with his wife Jennifer and their adorable 15-month-old triplets. Jeff also has a brand new iBook coming out very soon that's all about Kid Blog that he's going to be telling us about today. I wanted to share just a couple of testimonial kinds of comments about Jeff from some folks who are regular followers and huge fans. Shelly Terrell said Jeff is a great leader, teacher trainer, and resource sharer. The TeacherCast website and community continues to be one of the best EdTech resources she's come across. Jeff's leadership vision and design have helped the site become incredible training resources for teachers who are either just getting started on their journey with technology or who have been using it and integrating it for years. Another fan and active participant in all of Jeff's work is Sam Patterson, who's in the room with us today. And he says, not only does the website house an amazing wealth of resources, the community helped him to be more confident about his tech integration and to launch a weekly ed tech conference series with Patu and his puppets. So without any further ado, I am going to say welcome to Jeff. Take us on to the newbie question and have Jeff take over from here. <laughs> Jeff, what are some of the different ways educators are pursuing self-directed professional learning experiences? And why is that important? Wow. Good morning, everybody. It is, uh, I, I, thank you, Peggy. Um, what are some of the different ways that educators are pursuing self-directed professional development learning experiences? You know, we live in a time now where you can learn anything that you want at any given point and pretty much in any given medium. And that is 
an amazing blessing for all of us here, and that's also a curse for anybody who's in the position to create type of media for all of these different things. And we'll talk about why that's important in a moment here. But, you know, if you want to learn something, maybe you want to learn it in a video format. Maybe you want to learn it in an audio format. Maybe you prefer to read it. Maybe you're not looking to learn something, but maybe you're looking to put things together and use it for your classroom. Or maybe you're in a grad course and you need to do some research and you just want to figure out exactly what to do and where to go. So this whole concept of self-directed professional learning is amazing. I mean, the, the last week, let's, let's use Peggy as an example here. Uh, I guess it was two weeks ago. Um, we had a big, huge conference here in Philadelphia called EDUCON. And I asked Peggy what she was doing this weekend. She says, oh, I'm participating in the conference. And I said, are you here in Philly? And she's like, no, I'm in my living room. And the idea that you can have these learning experiences from your, your, your bedroom, essentially, gives you the ability to have self-directed professional learning at any point in time. And it's, it, it's pretty amazing. And, and it's important because we need to help everybody learn how to find these resources and learn how to collect these resources and most importantly learn how to turnkey these, these, these resources, whether it be to your students, whether it be to your staff, whether it be just open free to the world so other people can find it. There's a lot of reasons why, you know, just being self-directed is important. I, I believe all of us share one thing in common. I'd say most of us share one thing in common and that's that we all drive to work or we all have to travel to our work. And so that gives us a lot of time to ingest content, whether it be audio or video or you know, an audio book or a podcast or whatever. We all have these opportunities where we can focus on learning and improving and thinking about the day. And that makes this whole idea of self-directed learning extremely important. I mean, the only people that know how you learn is you. So take advantage of everything that you have. Um, I wanted to start off today by saying thank you so much for being here. Um, it, it's kind of scary and humbling at the same time that Peggy has asked me to come on and talk about TeacherCast. And I'm going to do something a little bit differently here if you're a, a fan or a participant in Classroom 2.0. Um, you might be used to presenters presenters, uh, presenters doing a whole bunch of slides. I don't really want to use this as a slide fest. I really would like to use this as a big Q&A. So I'm going to keep my eye on the chat as much as possible. But Peggy, please, if there's any uh, questions that come up, um, please feel free to interrupt me. I have a whole mess of information here to share with you. But the question that I have for you is, what do you want to learn today? Um, we're going to talk about TeacherCast. We're going to talk about how it works. We're going to talk about why I'm doing it and how it started. But my passions for TeacherCast are to share how things happen. How do you screencast? What's your favorite app for screencasting? How do you record audio? What's your re favorite thing to record on audio? How do you use video? What's your, what, so any of these questions, I have everything under the sun opened up here from Final Cut to iBooks Author to GarageBand to my screencast. I can show you anything that you want. And if this session here turns into a big Q&A, I am completely, completely open for that. And so I wanted to really take this concept of doing live demonstrations to the next level. So I want to say thank you to Peggy and her staff. And, and I, I definitely want to say thank you to, to Sam who's out there uh, heckling me. Um, so please, if you have any questions, Peggy, please throw them out here as we go. Let's, let's move forward. So who am I? My name is Jeff. I'm an educator in New Jersey. I'm a Google certified teacher. I'm a Google educator. I'm also the father of, I can't believe you said 15-month-old triplets, 15-month-old um, today, in fact. So we'll be doing a lot of those things. Um, so please find me on, online, TeacherCast. And if you have any questions that I didn't answer, 
teachercast.net slash voicemail. I'll show you how that works later here. So you can also find a little bit more information about me on my resume site, jeffreybradbury.com. Uh, you can find out a little bit about my presenting, my conducting. Um, I love coming out and doing, doing presentations, keynotes, uh, demonstrations. I'm looking forward this summer to going to ISTE, looking forward this summer to going to the Q Rockstar Conference, and uh, a few other great things. So please check me out. Um, Love it when people reach out and say hello and, and see how they're doing with things. I'm also a, a professional conductor. I guess that this, this whole idea really came out of conducting. And conducting is a weird thing. You realize that you're in charge. You realize that you're the one that's making all the decisions. You're realizing that you're the only one on stage facing the opposite direction. You also realize that you're the only one on stage not making any sound. And that really... That, that concept of you're the only one on stage doing something slightly different but for the betterment of bringing people together and the idea that you know, your actions, your thoughts, your, your feelings, your, your gestures, as it will, is really creating a learning experience for everybody on stage and also creating a learning experience for everybody in the audience. And you kind of get to be this puppet master playing around and pulling strings. And, you know, when we look at TeacherCast, we can look at it as a few things. We look at it as a website. We look at it as a podcast. All these different things it's evolved into. But really, somebody, I, and I don't remember who, but somebody once called it a symphony of educators. And I absolutely love that, that, that phrase where it's, it really is just turned into this website where people can come together and learn, people can come together and post stuff, people can come together and create, people can come together and make videos, and it has absolutely turned into the world's playground. I absolutely love how, how that's done. So let me do a few slides here, but you know, it really does come from a few years ago. I clearly remember seeing this quote for the first time. How many of you guys have seen this quote? You can raise your hand or you can just give me a yes in the, uh, in the, in the chat here. But the concept of awesome, the concept of you know, whether you think you can or can't, you're probably right. It's my motto. It's my, my creed. It's, my, it, it's really what I wake up and live by every single day. If you think you can do something, go ahead and do it. And four years ago, I was podcasting with a friend of mine, um, and we were doing these Apple podcasts and things like that. And essentially, um, I said, "Dude, I, I want to help you out more. I want to, I want to really, you know, let's take your brand and do it for educators, and let's take your brand and really teach people how to do Mac stuff." And basically, at that time, he said, "No, we're not going to do it that way. I, I see what you've got. You go do it." I thought about it a while. And you kind of, you're right. If you want to go do something, go do it. If you think you can help out your teachers, go help out your teachers. If you think you can help out your students, go think you'll help out your students. I mean, I challenge everybody here. If you think you can do something, go out there and, and take over the world, take over your classroom. Everybody is faced at the beginning of the year with 30 kids, 100 kids, 500 kids, and you need to make the decision, right, of, I can teach them. I can do this. I can, I can do all this stuff. And if you think you can or can't, you're probably right. And I wanted to make a place where I could show teachers how to use technology in their classroom. And that essentially turned into TeacherCast. So we're going to do a few things today. We're going to talk a little bit about what it is, why it is, how people can use it, because people always ask me, well, how do I use TeacherCast? And I'm like, it's just a website. You, you kind of search. Um, most importantly, it's how to share. And I really want to use today is how to create. Again, if you have any questions of how am I doing this, how does the website exist, what do I use for this, please, I, I want to help people out. And if there's enough questions, maybe I'll make a couple videos at the end of this stuff. So um, here we go. Um, TeacherCast, like I said, kind of started on July 11th. I had this concept of let's put an apple and a mortarboard together. It was 1 o'clock in the morning, and I woke up and said, I need to do this. 
And on July 24th, we had our first TeacherCast podcast. People said, well, how did you make your logo? I want you guys to take some time and go to Icon Archive. Icon Archive is my absolute, one of my best friends, sorry Sam, because you can find anything that you need on there as far as graphics. And my first logo was actually not what you see on the page right there. That's actually a, 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 my second version of my logo. But my first version of my logo was simply done with uh, graphical icons. Um, I wanted an apple and I wanted something that showed teacher educator, so hence the mortar board. And so Icon Archive is a great location to find a whole bunch of stuff. Um, my first podcast was the idea of let's bring teachers together and share what they're doing. I actually had my, my first guest was from uh, Sydney. And we got together and we talked about how to do technology. And so people ask me all the time, how do you do podcasting? And podcasting in 2015 is no different than podcasting in 2001. At that time, I used Skype. I used a program called Call Recorder which was, I think, 20 bucks, but it's well worth it. We did everything on GarageBand, and everything was completely done and edited out using, uh, using GarageBand. And my mic that I purchased at the time was a Yeti, a Blue Yeti mic. It cost you know, 50, 60, 80 bucks, whatever it was at the time. And it was really, really simple to put together an audio style show. And let me do a quick switch over here, Peggy. I'm going to make this happen. I'm going to put this here. I'm going to do this. Can everybody see my garage band, Peggy? Peggy? Yes. Okay. Yes, we're so, seeing it great. So essentially, when you're dealing with garage band or when you want to make a podcast, my theory and my philosophy behind this is create your own templates. So for instance, I have a movie sound here, and my movie sound was a jingle that I found. I just, a simple, and I can't play the audio here, but if you look here, I have an intro, which was actually done by a friend of mine, and it was, it was something like, hey, welcome to TeacherCast, and da 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 da, and then I had a jingle, and then all the way at the end of this, let me see if I can zoom out for you guys here, um, been a while since I played with GarageBand, um, but essentially at the end of all of this stuff, there it is. I had my ender, my ending music. And so all I had to do to create my podcast was record the audio using Call Recorder, import it into GarageBand, and because I already had a template made with the intro and the stuff at the end, it was really easy just to do some chopping. Um, I can get into this a lot. I know many people who are starting podcasts are sitting here editing everything because they um, don't um, want um, all the ums to um, be heard. My advice is don't worry about any of that. Just, just find a great audio recorder, make it work for yourself, have a good time. If you want to get into podcasting, absolutely go ahead. All you really need is a simple audio recorder um, program, and you are good to go. We should be back on the screen by now. Yes, we are. Yes. And so, Jeff, I think I'd like to ask some of the questions I've caught already. Sure. One Excellent. had to do with recording, so let me ask that one first. I was wondering if you use a special microphone when you record on an iPad, or do you just talk using the built-in microphone with the iPad? Well, a few things. iPads are wonderful, absolutely wonderful. You can use the built-in microphone for an iPad. The problem with anything that's built-in is it automatically takes all the audio out. Um, if you use a microphone, it's more uh, directional. I prefer the Snowball microphones. Um, I didn't, I, I've never owned one, but they're wonderful. And the reason why I, I prefer the Snowball mics, and, and maybe I see Wes Fryer, who, I, who is good with iPads, maybe he can talk about it in the chat. But if you have a camera connection kit, which is 20 bucks, you can plug your Snowball mic directly into your iPad. Now, I showed you that I was using a Yeti microphone. Can the Yetis go into the iPads? Absolutely. You just need to do it through a powered USB hub, which will cost you 20 bucks. But essentially, any, any USB microphone will plug into an iPad. Um, depending on the power that it needs to generate, you might need to um, get a powered hub or not. So um, that is that. There's also a microphone called an iRig, which is I-R-I-G. 
and I can show you all those different things as we go through here. So keep that question, but yes, you, uh, iRig mics plug directly into the headphone jack or something like this Blue Yeti or the Blue Snowball mics certainly work. Okay, and while we're paused here, let me ask these others that I've captured. Um, what have been some of your best lessons learned since you started live casting sessions from locations like ISTE or other venues? Oh, we're going to get into ISTE. I've got, some, I've got some things to talk about with ISTE. I'm also looking at the time here. Um, my biggest lessons learned, don't over edit. Mm -hmm. that, that's the biggest thing. I, I, I've, I, I will tell people, I've created over 500 podcasts and about the first 490 are horrible. Don't worry about it. Just create good content. You're going to get better. You're going to get better. I also recommend to people create a show zero and don't put it out. You know, do a show that you're going to do for yourself, that you're going to try things out, that you're going to work on your editing. You're going to find it. Create a show zero and then maybe when you get to your hundredth podcast, then you put it out. And then you could call it like, you know, your, your teacher cast lost episode or something like that. Um, you know, so many people, again, anybody can make a podcast. Anybody can go into their iPhone and use the call recorder app. Everybody has a free call recorder app on their home screen of their iPad or their iPhone. You can use that, save the audio, and next thing you know, you're making a podcast. It is that simple. Um, don't overthink things. Just make good content. You know, and my, uh, my other thing, and you're going to see this when I talk about TeacherCast, is create content that you are interested in because then your passions come out and then the audience knows that you really care about these subjects and, and you go. I mean, you can hear when I'm talking about podcasting and audio recording versus when I'm talking about um, a, a topic that I'm not as passionate about. And anybody has those things. So, you know, blog about what you're passionate about, talk about what you're passionate about, podcast what you're passionate about. Uh, let's do one more question because of time. Okay. How do we help other teachers overcome fears about sharing student work and being neg negatively judged by spelling errors and other mistakes? Wow. Um, don't worry about it. Everybody has an opinion and there's a tagline that goes into that. But everybody has an opinion. Just, just put up work. I, 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 don't, I don't worry about perfect work, but certainly. I just, just put out work. You know, the, the more you do, the better you get. The, you know, the rep, repetition creates, you know, um, what is it? Uh, pr practice doesn't make perfect. Practice makes perfect practicers. So just keep, just keep going with all this stuff. I'm, I'm constantly tweaking my show. I'm constantly tweaking my intro. Um, I'll show you once we get to the Evernote section. Just, just keep going with things. I mean, essentially, when we were in 2011 and doing all this podcasting, I wanted to go forward. I had a limit, and the limit was the website. So in 2012, we popped out with this amazing thing that some people are learning about now called WordPress. WordPress is free. It's open source. It's dynamic. I believe it's been the most transformational thing that's ever happened to me, edtech-wise. Um, but it's user-friendly. It's mind-blowing. You can do anything that you want to with WordPress. All you have to do is just sit down. It's good for developers who are professionals, and it's good for basic people who just got into a WordPress site. This was one of my original TeacherCast sites. I was happy with it. I thought it was great. Um, I looked at that as it's an iPad, meaning you have all these different icons and the icons open up to different things. I thought it was pretty cool. Um, what I didn't realize was it wasn't great for Google, it wasn't great for my users, and it was time to change. And so there's another saying here that you might be familiar with from uh, Henry Ford, which is, failure is simply the opportunity to begin again, this time more intelligently. And again, this is why I suggest create a show zero. And just know that your first 10 to 15 shows are going to be not so great. Your first 10 to 15 blog posts are going to be not so great. Your first two or three puppets that you make, they might not be great but keep getting up and keep trying different things and eventually you turn into what is now our brand new logo. This came out over the summertime and we have a new logo for TeacherCast University. And yes, Peggy says your first tweets. Absolutely. I remember the, you know, everyone's first tweet. Is this thing on? 
So our brand new website is, I think, fantastic. Um, I'm still tweaking it. I was even last week pulling plugins out and changing things around. But essentially, TeacherCast is going to be celebrating our fourth birthday um, in July of 2015 here. And, and you know, I have this logo on top that says it's a place for teachers to help other teachers. And I can't begin to tell you how important that is to me because it's not a place for one person to talk. In fact, when you listen to my shows, Jeff hardly talks at all. Um, my philosophy is introduce the guest and get out of the way. And I've debated that with a lot of people. But essentially, you know, it's the idea of it's a place for teachers to come and learn together. So I love having people on this show. Um, there's a lot of people in this chat room right now who have been on the show. I see Wes is here, Sam is here, Peggy I even uh, got onto being on the show in, in, in ISTE. Um, Paul has been on the show, and I'm, I'm sure I'm missing some people here. Um, but if you've been on the show, thank you. If you use the, the site, thank you. Um, there's a, it, it really has turned into a place for teachers to come together. You'll notice here um, that I have this TeacherCast University, and really it's a place for teachers to come to learn, but it's also a place for teachers to come to create. I've had two really great teachers I've worked with. One of them made a whole online course on green screen work and how she's using her iPad to make green screen videos. Fantastic. And I have a, I have a, a, a music teacher in, uh, I think it's Ohio, who wanted to make an online course on Audacity and how to record audio on your Windows machine. Absolutely perfect. I'm working with a teacher right now in the South and we're going to be making a whole online universe around Microsoft 360 and Microsoft OneNote and all those different Microsoft products. So. If you're looking for it, I, I, I have it on here. All you have to do is search. Um, if you're looking to learn how to make a puppet, Sam, who's in the audience here, did some really, really cool demos with me at ISTE last year and uh, to show people how to make puppets um, that he does. And they're pretty amazing. So I just want to do a quick walkthrough here before we get into some of the app sharing. So TeacherCast is really set up again. It's a WordPress site. It's a blog. Um, I, one point in time, I was specializing in app reviews, and, and I love it more when teachers want to write app reviews. Many of these app reviews were written by other teachers, and so I really love it when teachers come in and share their great app reviews. Live binders have always been important. I actually met Tina and Barbara, I think it was show number six or seven, and I believe I'm correct in saying that TeacherCast has the second largest repository for live binders in the world because Tina and Barbara have been so extremely supportive of, of TeacherCast and the work that I'm doing here. Um, you'll, you'll notice here that, you know, it's check out my live binder for elementary schools, for ed tech, for school counselors, for English. Basically, any topic or whoever you are, I have live binders. And behind each of these graphic logos here, there's more than 10,000 live binders on each of these pages, if not more. So definitely check out the live binders gallery. Like I said, it's, it's probably the second largest repository of live binders. And unlike live binders, it is actually broken down by category, by subject area. So definitely take the time to, to, to check out that stuff. Uh, Wes, thank you for the tweet. All right. Um, many of you guys who know me know I'm not much of a writer. I, I love blogging, but I, I, I'm not a writer. But our TeacherCast blog, I, I've started to create a lot of, uh, of written content for WordPress, for podcasting, for really just helping out with some of these great technologies. Um, I usually use the blog for others. It's, it's turned into a pretty fancy guest blog. Um, a lot of teachers have written into me, and I'm actually finding most of my um, most retweeted items come from the guest blogger. So if you're interested in writing on TeacherCast, please drop me a line. I would, I would love to have you uh, to share your stuff. Sam just put out a great blog, uh, Can Blogging Impact Students Learning? And I don't know, Sam, if you've seen these, but I've gotten a lot of debates back and forth of people writing about this. So you know, if you want a guest blog on TeacherCast, I certainly welcome it. We have a rather large educational video library, and this is constantly growing. And this is anything from our screencast to our conference things. Um, for instance, we have a large area of screencasts of how to do things like Final Cut Pro, how to do Twitter, how to do voice recording, how to do social media, how to write a book, how to use 
you name it. Um, I've got a lot of screencasts on here to check out. One of the brands that we have on here, and I'm trying to move as quickly as possible, is TeacherCast University. It's basically my home for all of the great learning content. So I have things on here like my keynotes, my presentations. Everybody, every time you go to a presentation, nobody knows what to do. Do you make a Google Doc for the world? Do you make a, a today's meet? Do you have all these different things? Well, when you come to my online courses, um, you see the course description, you see the back channel, you see all my links, you see all my resources. So whenever I come out to you know, like a Q Rockstar or an EdCamp or, or something soon, um, all of my presentations are archived right here on my webinars. And uh, even the stuff that I've done for Classroom 2.0 is on here. So um, if you're looking for any of my show notes or want to check out some of the presentations that I can do at your conference, you can certainly uh, check out my conference presentations list. Here are my keynotes. I have to update these. I have a few more to put in for that. Um, online courses is something that I'm really, really excited to, to offer because it's a, it's a way to make a series of videos for a given subject. And again, if you are interested in creating an online course together, I welcome it. I created a series called Google Drive in under five with the idea just to make some short videos. A lot of people are making these really awesome how to do Google video, uh, uh, blog posts. And I thought, let's do some like three minute, four minute videos of just simple how to get in there. So um, I've been creating some pretty simple um, how to do Google videos, because there's a lot of people that are getting into it. I'm going to be starting Google Classroom with my kids this week, so be expecting a lot of those things. Um, Kidblog. I love Kidblog, and I just put out a, like, it's like the definitive collection of Kidblog. Uh, Matt and Dan and I are working together to get this thing out and published. Um, Evernote. Everybody's asking about Evernote. Recently, um, I've had a lot of people asking me about podcasting, so I created educationalpodcasting.tips. And as you can see, I've only got six blog posts out right now, but it's anything from what kind of microphones do I need? How do I use an iPad? What apps do you use? Uh, the latest one I put out is how to learn how to use this particular plugin called PowerPress with your WordPress site. And so I'm starting to put my ideas down on podcasting because recently I've had a lot of people asking me to help them get podcasts started. And so if you're interested in starting your own podcast, we are working on... Um, very hard to get educators up on podcasting, whether it be a personal podcast or whether it be, um, you know, something for your classroom. And, and I always like I always look at podcasts in the two different realms: podcasting for classrooms and podcasting for personal stuff. Sunday nights. I'm going quickly here, but Sunday nights at seven o'clock we have the Tech Educator Podcast, and this website is TeacherCast.tv. Every Sunday at seven we do your favorite weekly webinar. Sam is my co-host. Peggy's usually on the chat room uh, throwing links and collecting things. Um, this week, like I said, we're doing, oh, what are we doing? Google Classroom this week. Next week, we're doing um, iBook Author, and we are doing Microsoft March. I'm really excited to be partnering with Microsoft. We're doing five shows featuring uh, Office 365, OneNote, um, all these different great Microsoft products. So if you're interested in that stuff, please check us out. And of course, all of our archives are up. Um, then I'd go through here. Let me, can I do a couple of live things here, Peggy? I think we can, right? Um, let's do a couple of live things. Um, people always ask me how to get a hold of me. There's a, there's a website that you need to learn, and that's called SpeakPipe. Um, I use this for TeacherCast as my voicemail service. It's free. I also use this at school with my students because... I just don't like the voicemail service that my school has. So I set, this, I set a number up so that way if my parents need to get a hold of me at school, it comes right in. Most uh, often or not, uh, you know, there's an app for this, so everything reaches out. So if you have any questions, SpeakPipe is absolutely great. Um, again, that's teachercast.net slash um, there. Uh, there's a couple of questions here. How do I handle disclosure about paid sponsorships and compensated promotions for vendor products. Uh, Wes, the easiest answer is, I don't worry about money. I, I know that's not the, the popular answer. I, I just don't get into cash. Um, it's not something I'm interested in. I, 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 you know, I, I, I don't deal with sponsored blog posts. I don't deal with 
sponsored app reviews. That's not what TeacherCast is about. I'd rather bring in income by having somebody bring me out as a keynoter or a featured speaker or something. Um, but to answer your question, Wes, I don't deal with, I, I just don't deal with money. I, I'd, I'd rather, for instance, I'll give you, I'll, I'll, I'll let you in on a little secret. I've had a sponsor for the last year. Um, I'm supposed to be invoicing him once a month. I haven't invoiced him since October. I, I'm just not worrying about it. It's, it's, I'd rather create more content. Um, probably got in a little bit too deep there, but that's, but still, I, I'd rather be spending my time making content. Um, all of my stuff is put up on YouTube. I, I recommend every classroom have a YouTube account. You can find every, all the videos up on YouTube. You can find all of our stuff up on iTunes. And so all of our shows get populated into various RSS feeds done through WordPress. And so when you look again, when you look on iTunes, I've got several audio and video. Really, whatever taste you have, um, everything is up there. Um, let's freeze here for a moment because you saw that TeacherCast University was bringing in online courses. And this is something that I was really, really excited to do. And working with Matt and Dan pretty closely on this, they are completely updating KidBlog over the last month and into the next few months. And so that's why I am very proud that on February 15th, I'm going to be releasing a brand new iBook um, on KidBlog. And it's got all of my videos. It's got a whole bunch of new screencasts. It is step-by-step -step tutorial. Everything is in here for a teacher that wants to learn how to get in and blog. Um, Wes, I'll go back to your question. Yeah, I, I would absolutely love it if everybody here pre-ordered the book. Um, I'd rather use teacher cast and sponsorships in this way, and, and I think this is a fair thing. I, I'd rather say pre-order my book, here's a little bit of value than ever get into sponsorships. It's just so much easier. Um, Teachercast.net slash kidblogbook is the direct link on that. Um, you know, if you want to support the channel, that's awesome. Um, this this Classroom 2.0 Live is certainly not a beg fest, so I don't want to do it as that. So that's about where I'll, all I will say on that. But, but that, it's a great book. Check it out. Um, and, and, and yeah, go from there on things. I also have an all about TeacherCast book. This was kind of like my preview thing that's quite outdated at this point. I'm going to be working uh, in the next couple of months on updating this with the new logos and everything else. So if you go into the iBook store, I have two things up there. I also have a free mobile app. And the free mobile app, I'm constantly tweaking and changing, but the current version of this is really my podcast player. So if you're interested in learning how to just, just find my content directly and how to listen to my audio shows, the TeacherCast broadcasting app is free. Um, oh, goodness, I think I'm almost at 100,000 downloads over the last two or three years. Um, very, very proud of it. And like I said, this is like generation four or five of the app. And, I might be changing it over the summertime as ISTE comes closer. So take a moment and download that. It's free, and you can hear a lot of great um, content for your car. So I want to take a moment here, and, 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 and it's 1245. I have a lot more to do, and I want to start to show you how I do things. So um, is there time for a few questions? I do have a few here, Jeff. What did you use to create your mobile app? I will answer that okay. in a few moments. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, next question. Um, how do you share large video files? That is, I don't know, by 35 minutes or more. Uh, I will also answer that question in a few minutes. Okay. How do I get more comments on students' kid blog posts without compromising security? Um, there's a few things that you can do with the new kid blog. Um, I, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see, let me see. Okay, um, let me do it this here. If I go into, pardon me while I talk to myself. Okay, so I did, all, I did the kid blog book in iBooks author. Uh, can you guys see this? And part of the new kid blog, if I come down here, is about, let's see, here's creating bloggers, selecting a post, um, oh, embed sidebar widgets, visuals, um, 
images and video. Okay. Trying to figure out where exactly in this book I have things. But one of the things that KidBlog now offers is called Classroom Connections. And essentially, you as a user of KidBlog can reach out to another class who's on KidBlog, and you can connect each of your classes. And it can be one way or both ways. So in other words, I can subscribe to your classroom, but you don't have to subscribe to mine. Okay? So through those classroom connections, you can have a student make a post, not share it with the entire world, but either share it only with the teacher, or you can have it shared with the other classrooms. So you can essentially sign up to be secret, if you will, pen pals with any number of classrooms, and you can start to do comments on that. I would also love to, if Sam is still here, I'd also love to have him comment in the chat because Sam has done some amazing things with blogging and commenting. Sam was one of my uh, co-authors on this book and he wrote an amazing forward about doing kid blog and such. So um, Sam, if you can say a couple things in there about chats, that might help the time go by quicker. Let me see if I can answer some of these other questions as we come back here. Application sharing, um, and if I come over here, Here's the soup to nuts of TeacherCast. People want to know about WordPress. Is it free? Yes. You can go to WordPress.com and get things for free. I have all of my TeacherCast hosting on Bluehost. Um, this is not an affiliate link. This is not a commercial. Um, I used to be with GoDaddy. I moved from them when I did the refresh over the summertime, and I'm now on Bluehost. Why do I love Bluehost? Because they pick up the phone after two ringy dingies, and it has absolutely been an amazing service to work with. If you're having questions about um, hosting, I can talk your ear off about hosting. So check that out. Bluehost is where I host all my stuff. Lipson is where I host all my podcasts. Again, I used to host all my podcasts on GoDaddy. I don't. I use Lipson. For five bucks a month, you can have all your stuff. You can get Lipson to create an app for you. It's 20 bucks a month. Um, but essentially for that, you have like unlimited bandwidth, you have unlimited downloads, and they give you a, a mobile app. There's a setup fee, and there's a whole bunch of other things but essentially Lipson will create your app for you. And so um, that's a good thing for me and that's a bad thing for me. I honestly, I, I don't like my current app. I, I'd like it to in include more of TeacherCast stuff and that's why I'm working right now with a great app company on how to redesign the TeacherCast app for the future. But how did I do my app to answer your question? I used Lipson. Um, how do I do large videos? I do everything in Final Cut. And let me quickly come up here. And by the way, speaking of Final Cut, and Wes, maybe you can do something on this one too. I am so excited that the Apple Distinguished Educator um, applications are coming up, or are, are out now. So if you are a teacher that wants to be a go-getter, please check out the Apple Distinguished Educator um, applications. This is Final Cut Pro. I've done a few videos on it. Actually, at the end of the month on Tech Educator, we're going to have the, the great John Carippo coming on to talk about how to app smash with Final Cut. But here is how I use uh, Final Cut. Essentially, I have all of my videos on here. Let me turn the audio skimming off. Um, I have all my videos on here, and at the end of this, I don't know if you can see this, but I simply hit the share button and it exports a 35-minute video or an hour-long video. Okay? Uh, scale to fit. There you go. So that's my, this happens to be a video that I just made for PBS Learning Media. Um, I put in for that. Wes, I'd love to talk to you about that as well. Sorry for that plug, but I wanted to say that to you for a while. Um, so there's a lot of great things to do here in Final Cut. I love talking Final Cut. I think I'm going to make a whole iBook out of it as, uh, eventually one day. So Final Cut is how I do it. YouTube allows you to upload as many, as, as long of a video as you need to. You just have to have a reputation with YouTube, which is, I think, 10 videos or something to that effect. Um, Final Cut Pro is cheap. Final Cut 7 was 1000 bucks. Final Cut Pro is, is 300 I know that's a large number for, for, for educators, but 300 bucks for all that it's done has been absolutely, absolutely awesome. So again, if you want to learn a little bit about Final Cut, reach out to me. I have no problem helping out with that stuff. Um, everybody looks at my videos and says, dude, how, will you, how do you do all that wonderful stuff? Um, does Final Cut Pro work with Yosemite, Doug? Yes, absolutely it does. I do all my graphic work in motion. Um, this is a monster program that only costs 50 bucks. I love Apple Motion. It does so many different things for me. And if you're looking for training on that, let me know. 
Um, QuickTime, I don't have time to do it right now, but I do all my screencasting in two applications. QuickTime is the first, and Telestream's ScreenFlow is the second one here. And let me see if I can pull this up here. Peggy, these really do need to be an hour and a half long presentations. Um, I'm going to do application sharing on ScreenFlow. And you should be able to see ScreenFlow now. ScreenFlow is very much, it's just a video editor, but it's got some pretty amazing um, editing tools. For instance, with, with QuickTime, I can record my screen, I can record my iPhone, my iPad, but it can't do editing. I have to then import it into Final Cut or import it into iMovie or something. Um, but with this, I have all of these wonderful editing controls here to make a project that is absolutely amazing. And with screen ScreenFlow 5, I can upload it directly to YouTube or Vimeo or save it to my desktop. What I do on everything is I take these as raw video files. I export the edited screencasts out. And then I import these into Final Cut. And then I put all my motion graphics. And I make it look a little glossy over top of it. And then from Final Cut, I go into uh, YouTube. My recommendation is I never, ever, ever go directly from an application into YouTube. I always save it on the desktop first. It saves the compression, and it's a little bit easier. Um, moving on very, very quickly here. Um, all of my presentations are done with Keynote. I'm an Apple buff, and I, I love Keynote. It's absolutely fantastic. Like I said, I do everything through iBook Author. Evernote is a gem. Sam and I are on Evernote constantly during our show. That's what we do all of our show notes for. I want to go back a few moments to talk about what I talked about with, um, with GarageBand. I said make yourself a template. Make yourself a template that way you don't have to reinvent the wheel every single time. I'm going to share with you my Evernote. And right here um, I have Evernote. And here is my Tech Educator Podcast show notes template. It's very, very basic, but I can copy and paste this. You'll also notice down here where it has the links, it all says HTTP slash colon, colon, semi forward, all of that stuff. And the reason why you always do show notes or blog posts or everything with the HTTP is because when I copy this, it will show up as a link in YouTube. If I just do www, YouTube doesn't know what to do with it. But that way I can copy this entire blog post and turn it over to YouTube and all the links match. Um, from here, I open up my Tech Educator show notes and that's how you get this, where I have my recording date, my show URL, my large graphic which goes onto YouTube, my small graphic which becomes my blog post uh, featured image. I have the show MP3, the YouTube title, here's the actual MP3 of it, all my contacts, and then I have all of my show notes. So people always say, well, how do you do things so fast? I template everything. Everything gets templated here. And so I can have a show literally up and running and record it within two hours of it being recorded. Um, I sometimes run 10 podcasts a week. If, I, if it's a good week and I can get enough guests, I'll sometimes record up to 10 shows a week. And it's all because everything is so methodically here um, organized and taken care of for that. I know we are running into time, so let me just see. I've got a, two more slides, a few more slides left here. So again, there's TeacherCast. Um, I highly, it's a passion of mine. Like I said, I love it as a place for teachers to come together and help other teachers. If you're interested in being a guest blogger, find me. If you want to be on the podcast, I love it. Most people come to me and say, I want to learn about flipped classroom. And I say, great, I know somebody who's flipping their classroom. Let me get three, you know, two people on the podcast and we do it together. So please check us out. If you want to be a part of the family, it is a family. Um, let's do it. And so that is essentially TeacherCast in a nutshell. And um, I, I, I'm looking forward to meeting everybody in ISTE this year. If you're coming out to Philly, I kind of feel this is home field advantage for ISTE because I'm going to have all my toys and we're working on doing the... Uh, the live broadcasting again. But, wow, it's 12.56. I, I want to just, again, say thank you to everybody who's here and for everybody to putting this together. But most importantly, I want to say thank you for supporting me. And we're good. Thanks so much, Jeff. I do have a few more 
questions that I gathered. Is the Connecting Classroom feature only available with the paid kid, kid blog subscription? No. Oh, good. Not that I know of, but I think. Okay. Let's see, I'm trying to find ones that I didn't answer already. Or you didn't answer, I didn't ask. That seems to be the most recent question that I, I hadn't asked already. Um, that's right. I think we've asked all the questions that I've had. Um, I know there are a couple teachers in the group today that have uh, been on your shows. If any of those teachers would like to comment on the mic, they can do that. Um, you just have to raise your hand if you want to do so, and we'll pass along the mic. If not, we will close out the show. Sam, so, no questions? Really? Sam, no questions? <laughs> Did Sam leave? Well, Sam is still logged in. Okay. Um, I, I want to take a, a, a moment since Howie is here to say, follow Howie. Howie is on is one of the lead planning committee members for EdCamp Magic, and in over the summertime we're going to be having EdCamp Magic, which is essentially EdCamp Disney, and we're looking forward to going down to uh, at the beginning of June for EdCamp Magic. Oh, Sam's trying to figure out the mic. Well, you don't have the mic privilege yet, Sam, so that's probably a Part of the problem. <laughs> Sam needs the mic privilege. Uh oh. He does now, but he's running audio setup. Oh lord. Um, I'll go back to Howie. If you want anything done Disney-wise, Howie is actually the guy who's behind getting the Disney ice cream bars put back into ISTE this year. So we are really going to. Oh, never mind. Okay, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can, Sam. Go easy wow. on you. You got an audience. No, uh, sorry about that. I haven't used this program on this computer before. Um, Hurry up, so what, what's my question? My question is, what's the most important thing when you know you're really starting off doing this thing? Like, like what is obviously some people have commented on the amount of time you spend doing this, and you talked about how like working with other teachers has really made the difference, but. But what what really keeps you in it, like all of the time? Because you're doing this stuff all of the time, Jeff. You know, what's your motivation? I, I I'll put it, and that's a thank you. That's a good question. Um, when I want to learn something, I do a podcast, and that's really that that that's really the power of the show. Now, I wanted to learn about being an ed camper, so I just started doing ed camp podcasts, and I had probably at the time most of the ed camp board on, and because we were doing a lot of ed camp shows, that actually helped create several ed camps. Um, I wanted to learn a couple years ago about being an ADE, so I had several Apple Distinguished Educators on, and we learned about being an, an Apple Distinguished. I, same thing with being a Google certifi cert cert Certified. Same thing with learning how to do Final Cut. I wanted to learn how to do Final Cut, so last year we had John Carippo come on. You know, the secret is what do you want to learn? Let's go back to the first question. What was the slide all the way back there, Peggy? Self-directed learning. What was the? Where are we here? Da, 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 da. So the different ways educators are putting self-directed professional learning experiences. I want to learn how to do puppets, so I'm asking you to come on the show and teach me about puppets. Now, the fact that I'm doing a show that somebody else can then learn from is fantastic and absolutely wonderful. So I've actually, I mean, on one hand, I have no problem saying that I'm creating a cast for the world to learn, but I'm just creating a bunch of resources that I want to learn from. And if you take it from that point of view, it's great. You know, I've never once come out and said, I'm the expert, I'm going to write about WordPress. I've always come out and said, I'd like to learn about WordPress. I'm going to write a blog on my findings or on what I've learned. 
And that's, that's kind of been the success story here because the questions that my teachers have about how to use technology are the same questions that your teachers have about how to use technology. So let's just share the wealth. And if we can do a show on how to do, um, you know, grants, proposals, puppets, graphics, whatever, it's going to help out somebody. So just make a really good piece of content, whether it be audio, video, or um, movable in your case. Right, and that's a very powerful model for podcasting as part of classroom learning because it's really you're building a text from sources. And with podcasting the way you're doing it, you have a lot of those sources firsthand. Um, and it's great for teachers to do, it's great for teachers to do with their students, and you know, I think we're all just fortunate that there are people like you who are building the resources to make that sometimes challenging tasks a whole lot more accessible with today's technology. Absolutely. It's, you know, by, by doing this medium, you know, I, I, I listen to a radio station that kind of jokes about being a radio host, and they, their, their motto is, microphones equal experts. If you have a microphone in front of you, you must be the expert in this. I couldn't disagree with that more. But if that's the perception, and the perception is if Jeff has a podcast and he wants me to be on the show, he must be an expert at it. And that gets me Microsoft or that gets me the guy who is the CEO of this ed tech company and I can then bring him on to then create awesome content for the world to hear. Great. I have a microphone. I have a show. And so, you know, you just start to kind of figure out how can I best help out other people that are wanting to listen to the show. And... I've been very, very blessed is the right word, I guess, that I've had, you know, a, an amazing PLN um, right by my side helping me out with this whole thing. Any other questions? I, 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 I look forward to hearing any voicemails or emails or tweets or something like that. Um, again, tomorrow night at 7 o'clock, we have uh, the great Alice Keeler coming on to talk about Google Classroom. So check us out over at teachercast.tv and uh, teachercast.net slash kidblogbook helps you to get to the, uh, the new kid blog iBook that's popping out in two weeks, or I should say a week. Can we get a round of applause for Peggy? Hello. Hi, Jeff. This is Paula. I'll definitely need a round of applause for both you and for Peggy. I remember the first time you ambushed me for an interview at ISTE, <laughs> and it was a rapid fire on the spot interview as we were walking from one spot to the the next, and um, you asked the the funny thing was everything went well until you asked me the last question, and luckily I didn't stumble, but I was like so surprised by it because you asked me, "Who's your favorite Kardashian?" <laughs> <laughs> you never know what to expect when you're being interviewed by Jeff. Just be prepared. But why did I ask you that question? And here's the secret: if you can get them to smile, you can get them to talk, and that goes for adults, and that certainly goes for children. If you can put a smile on their face, they will talk to you. So, just for the record, who is your favorite Kardashian? Uh, I guess Kim. There you go. <laughs> can, I, can I get an applause for Paula and Kim Kardashian? Uh, Howie, Wes, do you have a favorite Kardashian? This is being recorded. Sam, your favorite? <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Howie, you should have the mic now. Go ahead and click on the talk button and let us hear from you. Howie. It's like Voxer, Howie. Okay, so maybe it's not quite like Voxer.
We're all waiting for Howie to come on and sing When You Wish Upon a Star. Mike Unplugged. I love that episode. Uh-oh. Babies are crying. Any other questions? Uh, written, texted, um, audio? I don't have any others that are written, Jeff. Okay. So I'll go ahead and do the wrap-up slides. Although, Peggy, do you want to take the upcoming show slide? I sure do. Thank you so much, Jeff, for this fantastic, awesome show. We have so many new things to explore. And I know that people are going to be wanting to share this with other people, because these would be fabulous resources to share with teachers right in our own buildings as professional development sessions. So. Thank you so much. We have some great shows coming up. And just want to quickly tell you, next week we're going to be featuring Lucid Press. And we had Lucid Chart on our show a while back. And everyone loved that tool. So we decided that we wanted to invite them back to tell us about Lucid Press, which is a tool for creating things like newsletters and brochures and flyers and all kinds of great things. You can even create books with it. So that will be next Saturday. The following Saturday on February 21st, we have a fabulous teacher as our featured teacher, Mary Beth Hertz from the Science Leadership Academy will be sharing all of her great things she's doing with her students. Uh, and technology. And on February 28th, our very own moderator, Tammy Moore, is doing a, a terrific show on student study skills tools. Say that three times. And on March 7th, we have a great team of people coming who are all librarians who are going to be sharing how they organize live minders for librarians, but their tips will work for any of you that want to share live binders with teachers that you work with or anyone in your PLN. So I hope you'll come back and join us. Same time, same place, every Saturday. And now I'll go back to Lori and wrap it up. Thanks, Peggy. The Learning Revolution Project is Steve Hargadon's latest endeavor. He's gathered together all his professional development activities at one place, including the Host Your Own webinar. You can sign up for a Blackboard Collaborate room and host your own event as long as you make that event public. That is, other people can attend other than the people you are inviting. You can nominate a featured teacher like Mary Beth will be in a couple weeks by filling out the form at tinyurl.com slash cr2oli featured teacher nominate without the e at the end. The form is also in the live binder for the month. And you can nominate yourself as a featured teacher as well for a month. As you exit this session, your browser should open the Classroom 2.0 live survey. If it doesn't, you can take the link from the chat box, or you can also get the link from within the live binder. So there's a tab for Classroom 2.0 resources that the survey is in, as well as that um, feature teacher form. When you fill out that survey, you can request a professional development certificate. Please, though, make sure this goes to a personal email address rather than a school email address. This is the direct link for the survey. And it will actually now print out your name on the survey when you get it back, besides just the, uh, besides the um, event name. Your name will show up. The audio and video collection for recordings is available in iTunes U. And here's the link to get to those collections. Again, the, the page for the links for these are also in the live binder. The archives 
are available by RSS feed as well. So you can click this link and get the show archives by RSS feed on the Classroom 2.0 live site itself. And again, some very special thanks to Jeff Bradbury and TeacherCast, to Steve Hargadon, founder of Classroom 2.0, Teacher 2.0, Future of Education, and the Learning Revolution, to Weebly.com for providing our, web, our website, to Blackboard Collaborate for the webinar platform, and to everyone who came to the show and participated in today's show. Thank you, thank all of you for coming today. And that's the end of the slides, but Howie, if your mic is working now and you'd still like to share, we would like for you to do so. Okay. Um, I, I apologize. The uh, snowball mic was uh, was unplugged. i got to close the door. Somebody's at the door. 30, 10, 10 seconds. Just one second. Sorry about that. One more time, guys. Yeah. Th big thank you to Peggy and for everybody on the team here. It has absolutely been amazing, and I, I, I'm always blessed when asked to be come back to come back on. If you guys have any suggestions for other topics, if I'm ever asked on again, please leave it in the chat room because I'd love to come on and share whatever we talked about today, if not more. Hey, thanks, Jeff. Uh, it's been great getting to know Jeff and Ed Camp Magic. I'll do the 90 second spiel. Ed Camp Magic came about because of uh, two people talking about Disney and technology, um, and it is a traditional Ed Camp, but we have about uh, seven different events all around before and after Ed Camp. Uh, tweet up the night before June 5th. Ed Camp Magic is the at Windermere Prep in Orlando. Uh, discounts available on park tickets, rooms, and everything. We have a special dessert party, private dirt dessert party at Epcot with the fireworks on Saturday night. And then we have meetups planned throughout the week from Sunday through Friday. Many people are coming for seven to ten days. Um, have lots. We have, at this point, over $4,000 worth of prizes that we're going to be giving away. Uh, just many, many things. And a special treat, we will have author Jeff Dixon doing a panel at the end of the day to talk about storytelling, education, and writing. So that's a quick summary in 90 seconds of what we're going to be doing. Uh, there are still a few tickets available. Go to the edcampmagic.com website and would love to have anybody join us. I heard you're going to be doing your Little Mermaid impression. Is that true? Uh, yeah, I got the suit. Uh, I rented it the other day, Jeff. It's all set and ready to go. A little tight, but it's going to work. Fantastic. Peggy. Thanks, Howie. Thank you Again, so thanks much. so much, everyone, for coming to today's show. In order for that recording to process, please remember you do must exit the session. And on a PC, it's a white X in the upper right corner. On a Mac, it's an icon in the upper left corner to leave the room. That way, our recording will be able to process. Again, thanks for coming. Thank you, guys. I'm going to get out of here.